as we already saw the characters they're probably going to be playing will be seeing Pyra and Mithra versus ZSS. That's a big reason why I'm bringing this up. What DLC skins would you want in this game and why? And I continuously bring this up because I hope Nintendo one day listens and understands how much money I'm, I'm literally ready to open my bank account and hit the transfer button for all of the skins that I could get. Please give me a Mr. L. Please give me a Dry Bowser. For, if you want a Dude, bank dry big Bowser. money, yo, I'm telling you right now, if you want free money, free money, throw a swimsuit edition in here. People will pay for swimsuit Mario and Wario. Now we're getting into game number one here. We got losers round top and so loses top eight round one. It is Webb versus Elman. Webb had to make quite a climb to get to here. And this is one of the people that we definitely predict to have a solid run through losers. But Elman also did a very good job getting here too. And is actually running it straight into Pyra instead of going to Mithra. Elman is, or uh, Webb is like one of the people that we always expect to see in these top eights, like these weekly events. Like he's he's usually just a shoe in. Sometimes he'll miss it by like a little bit, you know, he'll get ninth. But he's always going to be at that top cut of bracket. Here he is. He made, like you said, a long loser's <laughs> run. And Elman making a long run right into the blast zone there, thanks to that quick little setup of that Nair down B. So one of the things in this matchup, and uh, people are going to be noticing right off the bat, obviously off that really hot start, is both these characters have really consistent kill power. DSS does not suck. I'm right here, none of that. <laughs> so with no more propaganda here, bro. I don't. I don't. I, look, I've been around. I've been around him for too long. I don't listen to his nonsense. But uh, you know. Pyra has so much kill power, so much straight kill power at all times that it's really good at just calling out bad aerial movement if you happen to catch some of those flip jumps. And you see he's trying to cover the roll get up there with down air, which leads into many confirms. So Pyra doesn't lack in the kill department, but ZSS always has the ability to snipe out kills with things like flip kick at ledge, back airs off stage, especially on a recovery that's a little bit easy to cover. I wonder if Elman actually did a pretty solid job of avoiding that one. Yeah, using the uh, the burning burning sword to get himself back onto the stage. Now, I want to touch on what something that you mentioned there for a second, and it's the fact that he is using basically only, he's only used Pyra so far. We haven't seen the Mithra yet, which is really interesting, especially against a fast, fast character like Zero Suit Samus. You'd almost mm -hmm. like 100% expect to see a lot more Mithra because you know it's just easier to hit uh, land hits with her. Every but time Elman I see is that. going to be able to get that first kill out. He is going to take 106% extra credit before being able to do it. So Webb, definitely in a really good spot. Yeah, every single time I see that Nair hit, I expect it to be kill. Like, it seems like such a weird hitbox. Also, at this point, with how long he's committed to it, I'm pretty much, I'm just set in the mindset that Elman actually solo uh, mains Pyra, which is something that we've joked about in the past. It's hard to figure out who you're going to play. But there are some relatively easy out of shield punish options that Pyra can do. Up the out of shield boost kick is going to be a consistent way to deal with it. Dude, I love this combo by Webb. There's oh. so many up airs in this chain, but that was 64% off of one Nair. He got started and he still hasn't stopped yet. Uh, Elman's only been able to get 19, now 31% onto the board for the second stock. And sure, he's building up the percents. But at this point, from what we've seen, Elman's already at kill percent. WebJP's just one good conversion off of ending this game one. He's like, I said it before we went uh, on commentary, like before we were hot mic. And Webb's probably like in this loser side, other than 17, he's probably my favorite to make it all the way up to Grands to face off the Shark. And he's looking to prove my point here. Taking down Elman game one, not quite yet, but he's very, very close to it with that back air. He looks to set up the offstage interaction that seals it. The down B doesn't close it. Elman actually connects with one more Nair. He brings Webb close to death, but the landing side B going to close it out. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, I'm pretty dead set in the mindset that he's gonna be solo Pyra. The fact that he didn't switch off at any point to Mithra to kind of deal with having uh, better frame data, having the ability to box with Webb, it seems like he's much more content with playing Pyra, which necessarily isn't a terrible idea. However, the problem you run into is that in center stage, trying to box with zss is a real pain in the ass you can't deal with the frame data she's got she's got f tilt she got there she's got jab it's so easy to keep your off even though you got the range it's gonna be kind of hard to deal with long term so at ledge i agree 100 percent. i think pyra eats everybody up that ledge problem is putting web there in the first place is like like you were saying like in terms of frame data pyro kind of just can't really beat zss in a lot of those situations like we saw it over and over web was just kind of running all over everything that l man 
kind of wanted to do in mm -hmm. just about every situation just by out frame dating him. So he I also had like really good spacing too in terms of like you, you have to get, you have to respect the, like you have to respect the options that Pyra has at all times. It's, it's just a very, very strong hitbox that could kill you at like 50, you get caught by a straight F smash, you get caught well off stage with a hit, like you could die sub 100 so easy. So it was really impressive on how Webb kept out of range just to make sure that element never got set up. Yeah, it was like a perfect example of hit and run. Like he was just coming in, getting like 40, 50% running away, letting L-Man kind of just throw out some nares, throw out some up airs, throw out some burning swords in neutral, and then just coming back in for more. And that's like actually really what you want to see, especially when someone tries to solo, like do solo Pyra, as we're seeing here from L-Man. Because you don't have to really worry a whole lot about like them pulling out that Mithra and then just mashing on it. Because that's yeah. something that even Mithra, like even Mithra can do against ZSS. Is and not a lot of characters can. It's just Ooh. mesh on CSS, but Web hitting him with yet again that nair down B to close out the first stock. That's the exact same first stock we saw last game too, Ajax. Yeah, getting hit off the side instead, and that oh my god, Blazing Edge is so good at the ledge. It's, um, actually no, side B is Blazing Edge. I'm gonna remember as we go along. But one of the things that I'm noticing really quickly out of L Man too is L Man is playing with the mindset of I'm gonna attack where you're going to be versus where you are. Web doesn't fall for that as the game goes on longer because it's a good idea to do against fast characters that up b is also a very good idea to do when people are boxing on your shield like that but if you are constantly swinging preemptively what's web going to continue to do uh, continue to do like so he's gonna going keep to sit in shield. Punishing you. Yeah. yeah he's gonna keep sitting in shield he's gonna chill he's gonna let you swing then with punish. And that's something that even like outside of L Man just trying to consistently bait. That's something that WebJP is good at against everyone. WebJP is really, really good as a player at waiting for his opponent to swing and then saying, I bet you wish you didn't swing now, boy. Yeah, see, I like the fact that that time uh, L Man actually waited a second before he decided to draw F tilt. Granted, Web was already still chilling. He was content that he wasn't going to die to a throw, so there's no point. But that side B will definitely rip it. That, oh my god, that move is so good at the ledge against so many recoveries that you pretty much have to accept it when you're at a certain point below it. And I really, I did really like the idea that Webb was going. Oh, good, that, goodness, that was so close. But uh, I, I really like the idea that Webb was going for there with those those wall jump, uh, wall jump weight bounce paralyzers. He was definitely trying to set up for probably an upbeat out of the paralyzed Pyro, but it just didn't work out for him. And I really like that L Man countered it by using that kind of nearly unpunishable option. It's actually even right now. This is the it scary is. part. Of, this is the scary part about this matchup that even center stage. Pyra can kill on Kalos of all stages with like a forward smash and, and just kill sub below and also catch you at the ledge with that massive down air that sheets. I get uh, that. See that down air that is showing exactly how much Sakurai loves his wife. He blessed her with that down air. Dude, it's so good. Like in, in so many situations and it kills so, so heavily, like so heavily early. Um, mm -hmm. And we saw it right there from, from L-Man. He actually does, like you said, it was even. He managed to take the lead off of it. Webb's probably about to take that lead back with this landing there, up air chain. And, oh, he goes for the boost kick. Oh. He actually gets caught by an up smash on his own landing. That was looking scary for the player right here. that he right missed there too. Oh. Because Webb, if you notice the way Webb went about it, he was actually trying to DI mix up L-Man. He tried to cross him up on the outer side so he can mix up his DI, maybe catch him holding in. And get, and get an early kill off the top. But it, 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 now that that's been revealed, it's gonna make it easier for L-Man to try and chill, maybe play a bit more passive by the ledge. Oh no, or that is not, not how you do not. it though. Maybe not. That, that right there is such a scary spot because you either A, roll in, possibly get caught by a wall space down or a smash anyways and die, or you hopefully time it and guess correctly by get up, get up attack. But here's the thing. Even if you get up attack there and you guess wrong, a near flip kick can happen or a near back air. There's so many different setups you can get caught by there. It's it, it just it's just on you to guess what Web's going for. Especially with a player as good as Web, right? Like, cause Web can change what he's planning to do on a dime. He's not one of those players that are like, I'm going to go for this combo, so I'm just gonna go for it even if you don't get hit by it. Web will straight up like do a, a full 180, like mid attack and go, oh, you dodged it? Okay, time for Nair Dare. Mm -hmm. Also something that probably L-Man wasn't prepared for is that Web 
loves flat stages with ZSS. That is a very weird thing. ZSS players hate FD. They do, well, I mean, Kalos isn't as bad, but majority of the time, actually, no, Kalos is pretty annoying for ZSS, actually. You want those platforms. But Webb actually likes playing on the flat stages. He likes being able to just deal with somebody without a jump, like a platform to escape to. And I think that might have caught Elman off guard in terms of counterpicking there, because you just showed that Webb actually really likes playing on that stage, and he wasn't able to kind of preemptively throw out hitboxes and kind of attach it, like attack his approach the way he was hoping for. Yeah, and I wonder, I wonder if that might be a holdover from, from Webb's days as the Lucas monster that he used to be. Um, cause Lucas oh, definitely probably. is like a huge fan of flat stages. So I wonder if like playing on so many flat stages, like in his time as a Lucas main, uh, Webb just kind of got used to like how you need to play around the lack of platforms and he just carried it over into his ZSS play, which we're seeing here is, is kind of, uh, very terrifying Ajax. Yeah. And another thing too, is Webb is, he's willing to be patient when necessary. And that plays against Elman's uh, win condition because Elman needs ZSS to be within range of like calling out a jump or calling out a flip kick it, like at the ledge right there right that's where Elman can win but that's also where Webb wants to be fighting Webb at the ledge in a matchup is going to be a real detriment to your success and he goes for I, that might have been a miss input because he goes for grab off of that oh Webb Oop. trying to read the, the air dodge in but it doesn't quite work out uh, he's lucky he didn't get punished harder there bad, yeah a bit of a bad option coverage from both of them and it just kind of results in us going right back to where we started a few seconds ago, but Webb popping right on over with that flip kick, taking out L-Man while he's basically defenseless. He had that burning uh, burning edge out. Couldn't yeah. use, uh, couldn't do much other than push shield, didn't even get the opportunity to do that. That almost looks like a trap to the flowchart type moment there because L-Man constantly throws side B at ledge when he's on his way back, uses air dodge to get in. Webb wasn't there, and maybe you were trying to cover flip kick, but you still got punished for it. If you had a hitbox, it might have helped out. I still feel pretty good for Hellman in terms of making a comeback. I like the neutral B usage. The kill power is always there. And it is. But, hey, hey, speaking of which, there's the downer hit the ledge. God dang, that was nice. That was a really good use of, like you said, the, the insanely good DLC privilege dare mm -hmm. uh, to take... take Webb out maybe a little bit earlier than Webb would have liked. We've seen him living like very, very long, even with the insane kill power that Pyra has at her disposal. So Webb's like just a good ass defensive player overall. Yep. I, another thing uh, that Webb has done a really good job as well is not only has been dipping around, he's been he can get caught by a side B occasionally, but nothing that's been massively hurtful. If Elman can find a way to maneuver around that, maybe call out the jump where he always throws up the side B, he can get a huge punish that time he actually caught him at the ledge there but if, if he can capitalize off that bigger like right here and switch it up this could be huge for him as the set progresses seen like basically every single time that uh L man gets sent off stage he tries to recover back with that side beat and i think like as long as he has his jump uh, Webb could definitely be doing a bit more to punish it. ZSS has the aerial mobility to just hop right on over that blazing edge and get right in Pyro's face. Uh, and I, I would really like to see him do more of it because he's just kind of been letting oh. L-Man get back to the stage for free. But right now, they're just looking for their win cons, man. Yeah, something else I just noticed as well. Like, it, oh no, that was actually- It's full of jump. It, yeah, he sniped out his jump so he couldn't do anything about that there. That's a, that's a L he has to hold. But something I've noticed, that L-Man does, and you oh, please, yes, yes, there we go. That's exactly what I was about to point out. He has been holding off of neutral beat. He's been only some, like, just letting it go, like, off of a simple charge. You can break a shield with that if people are constantly shielding it, if you condition uh, them into that. So holding it all the way, and that's another good way to bait a get-up attack right there. Fade away with the neutral beat and catch somebody who decided to swing early. I am so glad that L-Man, as I was about to point it out, immediately switched up the usage of neutral beat. Yeah, and his, that's like, like you said earlier, that's where he's really making his money is on the ledge. That's where he's gotten, I think, like 100% of his kills so far mm -hmm. in this set is by baiting ledge options out from Webb and then getting kills oh. off of him. That was so close to being a neutral beat. And honestly, even on Kalos, that might have killed Ajax. That's what's so scary about Pyro is that both of us were like thinking, hey, this this might be it for the game. Webb gets lucky enough that he gets that fair in that, that beats it out. But it, it was looking like it could have been curtains, at least on game 
game three for the ZSS. And see how quick Flame Nova ends too? Like now you see Webb is respecting it. He understands, okay, Flame Nova's a problem. I can't, that, <laughs> spin the win is something that is really consistent for many people. Let me not go fight it. Oh, you were, okay. So I didn't think he was gonna be able to actually react fast enough after throwing that to get the shield up. So still gets a little bit more time in the match. L-Man is one good straight hit away. Hasn't swung a large smash attack because he understands that could cost him the match. But, oh, flip kick is busted. Ajax, the fact that he got Ajax, away from that. Ajax, dude, that was not fair. And oh my God, Webb. Forcing the roll away, just running in, putting so much pressure on L-Man in that roll situation. Reading it correctly and taking it 3-0 over L-Man. That was so good. That was such a good ending from Webb.